might sound harmless, but if you take a little too much Tylenol every day, it could be fatal. Especially if you have drinking problems, you know, like if you're an alcoholic, it could damage your, your liver. That's where the problem is, is Tylenol damages the liver. So if you have any kind of liver disease, whether it be hepatitis or some other thing uh, that's related to alcohol or, or drugs that have done that, then you really don't want to be taking a drug like Tylenol. It's too dangerous. And you know, another thing that a lot of people think that it's safe to take Tylenol over aspirin, for example, because they think that it doesn't cause bleeding like aspirin does, but Tylenol can also cause GI bleeding. That's right, and, uh, and it's about as bad as aspirin. You have to take about two grams a day, which isn't hard to do, because each pill is 325 milligrams. If you take two of those, that's about 650 milligrams. Just you do that three dose. times a day. <laughs> do that three times or four times a day, you're up at that two gram level, and you're at risk for GI bleeding. And it's really easy to do, not just by taking a plain Tylenol, but there are a lot of medications that have Tylenol in them, you know, like Vicodin, for example, mm -hmm. and cough medicines and cold medicines. And Right. We tend to, to use a lot of those medicines together, particularly in kids, because we don't want to use aspirin in kids because occasionally somebody comes down with this terrible disease called Ray syndrome. So when we're looking at, at, at uh, what's safe to take, if you are taking Tylenol, over a, over a long period of time, depending on what your liver can do in terms of detoxification, because that's where Tylenol is detoxified, is in the liver. If your liver is not too strong because it's, it's got an illness of some kind or you're drinking alcohol, the chances of it being fatal are much higher than you might think. And if you have liver failure from that, the chances are dying, of dying are higher than if you take a, a large dose of Tylenol, say 12 to 15 grams at one time in a suicide attempt, which isn't that many pills, uh, then you're looking at maybe only 27% of those people will die because you can do things to help protect the liver in both, in both cases. And what you need to know is that the other name for Tylenol is acetaminophen because they're not going to say Tylenol in some of the different brands. Exactly. Because that's really a brand name. But if you have a liver problem, you can also have multi-organ shutdown that can kill you. You know, it can affect your kidneys and your brain. And Once the liver your, goes your bad, lungs. all the rest goes with it. And what we have to remember is that if we have a problem with that, we need to get to the hospital. And there is an antidote for it. You could take a, a drug called N-acetylcysteine. A lot of people call it NAC. And if you take several grams of it, what you can do is you can speed the detoxification through the liver because there are basically three, four pathways for liver detoxification. N-acetylcysteine is one. Glycine is another. It's another amino acid that helps to detoxify. And if you have aspirin overdose, glycine is what you need to take for that. Then there are people who are using uh, sulfate for detoxification and glutathione. So when you have a Tylenol or acetaminophen overdose, it's really important to take a big slug of N-acetylcysteine. Now, there's an interesting way to look at what, these, what this drug does. Aspirin, Tylenol, and drugs like Vioxx inhibit, inhibit an enzyme called cytochrome C oxidase. And that enzyme is important in making energy for the cells in the mitochondria. So what's happening basically is when we overdose with N-acetylcysteine or these other uh, substances we're talking about, it damages the mitochondria. You can't make enough energy, and that leads to all the problems that you see. So when that happens, you shut down a lot of systems in the body. For example, uh, you may shut down uh, DNA production that's normal. That may affect how your risk for cancer unfolds because when that happens, your risk for cancer goes up. So that's the mechanism that's involved. Well, it's not well lead, known. One thing leads to another, doesn't it? It does. You know, there was even some talk about the H1N1 flu when people were dying. Die, some people were dying from that. It was all very exaggerated. But there was some thought that some of the people that had the H1N1 were taking Tylenol for their symptoms, and it was the Tylenol that killed them, not the flu. Well, that's an interesting uh, theory, and it makes a lot of sense. I'm sure that a lot of people, when they're uncomfortable, they think that things like aspirin and Tylenol on some of the NSAIDs are safe, so they just pop one after the other, and it's not safe. So. 
We have to keep in mind that all these drugs, whether they're prescription or not, have potential side effects and some of them can be lethal. In the case of acetaminophen or Tylenol, it's, it's a shock to most people to think, really? Because by the ads that, that, that they're talking about on TV, they're saying Tylenol is what doctors recommend most in the hospital. And to and me, it's safer than incense. Yeah, and... that's shocking to me because it's the very last thing you'd want to use in the hospital in someone who needs to be detoxified. So keep in mind that these drugs are not safe. They should be used only occasionally and as they're directed.